trying to get your emotions, emotions in check and um, you know, trying to calm yourself back down, well then you're taken away from your preparation, then you're taken away from executing on the field. So uh, and that just puts all the importance on you know, the, the, the film during the week, the practice reps, and just making 100% sure that you're ready to go on Saturday so that when that time comes, you're not nervous, you're just excited and ready to play. On the winning edge, those are all the little things in those little plays to make you get the separation you need. So all you got to do is catch it and then run. It's, it's not traveling on the road by a $40,000 charter flight. It's, it's a bus trip up. Um, it's a way to keep our money that we're spending, as well as the fans attending the game, uh, keep their money in the state of Michigan. Shotgun snap to Andrew Maxwell. Throws it right side. Deion Sims has it. Deion at the 10, at the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. A 20-yard score. Andrew Maxwell to Deion Sims. The majority of the Michigan State campus remained silent on Labor Day as some 48,000 students enjoyed the back end of the three-day holiday. But for the rest of the coaching staff, it was business as usual. Fresh from a 17-13 victory over Boise State in the season opener, Head coach Mark D'Antonio and his 11th ranked Spartans have turned their attention to in-state rival, Central Michigan. Uh, real quickly to recap Boise, uh, I thought one of the things we did was fight through adversity. There's no question about that. Uh, uh, you know, we sort of regathered ourselves at halftime and sort of came out and played a little bit better. Offensively, uh, you know, great day by Le'Veon Bell, obviously. Big day, controlled the line of scrimmage, ran the ball effectively. I thought Maxwell played, played well. Uh, you know, he had a couple turnovers there, which I don't really think was his fault. Uh, but I thought he was in control. He's uh, had good leadership. He was calm for his first game out in a big environment like that. I thought he played well. I was interested in your comment after the game that said you were more relaxed almost than you've been in a long time. I, I know you said that was about preparation, but did that surprise you? And, and do you think that's going to be your M.O. all season? You know, it kind of did surprise me because that was something that I've been wondering about was what am I going to feel when it's 20 minutes before kickoff and we're sitting in the locker room and we're getting ready to go out there. And, and I was surprised. I, I was calm and I, um, you know, my nerves weren't really running that high and I was just, I was excited and I was ready to play. And, and hopefully that can be, you know, my MO and that hopefully can be my mindset before every game because I think it's just easier to relax and play the game that way. If you're if you're too busy trying to get your emotions, emotions in check and um, you know trying to calm yourself back down, well then you're taken away from your preparation, then you're taken away from executing on the field. So uh, and that just puts all the importance on you know the, the, the film during the week, the practice reps, and just making 100% sure that you're ready to go on Saturday so that when that time comes, you're not nervous, you're just excited and ready to play. Andrew, what's, what's it gonna be like for you to be playing, what, 30 minutes from home? Mm -hmm. um, just what are you looking forward to in this game? Are there are there a lot of friends? You have a lot of friends at Central, whatever. Yeah, it's going to be a pretty cool experience. I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, my dad and I would go over there almost every weekend that they had a game, uh, and I do have a lot of my good friends go to Central, so they'll be in the student section, um, and that's just going to be fun. It's going to be a really cool atmosphere. I think. I think there's going to be a lot of Michigan State fans who make the trip, um, and I think that stadium will be about as full as it's ever been. So that'll be a cool experience for both teams. Andrew, can you, um, I guess, discuss the you have a um, high school teammate uh, who was on Central, and uh, I, I think I read you're pretty close friends with him as well. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of talk about maybe is there you know a texting relationship going on this week? Do you guys go back and forth, and how close are you with him? Yeah, Connor's one of my very best friends. It's Connor Ghani. He's number 37. He does their kickoffs for them. Um, and Connor and I got to become really good friends when we played All-Star Little League Baseball together when we were 12. So uh, we've been friends you know for a while now, and really just happy to see him doing so well and getting an opportunity to play because I know that playing um, this game at this level was a dream of his so for him to be doing that and doing it at a high level it's exciting for me to, to see and, and we texted yesterday and no trash or anything he just said he was excited to see me and I said likewise and um, we're looking forward to playing against each other. I don't know how many secrets he knows but um, no he's hopefully he doesn't <laughs> spill too many beans I don't think he has any. 
every wide, every young wide receiver has to understand that when that ball is thrown, and excuse the expression, it's a blessing. And you have to take that perspective. You have to think that this ball, this may be the last ball I ever get. And I have to go after that ball and, and take care of it, and it's precious. So, um, you know, seizing the moment is where my guys who have got to take another step and, you know, attacking the ball. Ready? Let's get started. Okay, before we get started with that, let's just make sure we talk about a little bit what happened yesterday. And, and it just here's just, you know, a theme that we just need to make sure that we hold true once we get into the game. You know, the biggest thing for us right now is the effort. Okay, which I don't have a problem with anybody in this group with the effort. Okay, but we got to make sure the effort is there this week. Okay, you're going in a hostile environment, your effort's got to be there. You always got to match their intensity. The details, you know, everything that we talk about in here as far as how you run your routes, the depths of your routes, the little details, those are the things that get you open in a, in a timely fashion right there for the quarterback. So let's make sure that we're taking care of that when we go in and practice today. Now, the efficiency port portion of it. You know, we talk about master the concept of efficiency. And we're always talking about being efficient within your routes. Let's try to make sure that when we get our double moves uh, this week, um, five, because we get, right now you're probably the best okie dokie guy we got. So, you know, be ready. Okay, if you just buy into the little things, and that's what we put up on the winning edge. On the winning edge, those are all the little things in those little plays to make you get the separation you need. So all you got to do is catch it and then run. Okay, so make sure we buy into those things. As far as you young guys, we got to get on the same page. How much time did you guys spend with your materials last night? 45 minutes. 45 minutes? That's, you know, that, like every little bit helps. Every little bit helps. You know, you should be getting with one of these old guys. Every little bit of the, you know, every little bit exposure you get helps you. You know, if you got free time, if you want to eat lunch, eat lunch in my office. Come sit with me and we can talk it over and get, get things squared away. Okay, if you can do that, I'll make time for you. I won't work out. I won't try to get my buff on. Okay? All right, but let's make sure when you got time, I got time. Okay? And that's most important. I always make time for you guys. After losing three veteran receivers from last year's 11-3 team, the Spartans are retooling the passing game in 2012. Despite gaining 248 yards through the air in the season opening win over Boise State, the passing game lacked explosive plays. This week, the young receiving core is focused on cashing in on those opportunities to make plays down the field. Go! Good. Fingers on the ball. Trust your fingers. All right, all right. Drive it over. Good, keep going. Need to give y'all somebody to read. Much better day. Much better day. I was, I was really impressed with our effort. I was impressed with you know, our understanding of what we're trying to get done. That was much better. That's the way we're supposed to practice. And I still finish with catching the ball and scoring. That mentality of finding where guys are on the field and avoiding them to still, you know, matriculate the ball up. Okay, so now we gotta just take it to another level. Good practice, but now let's have a better practice come tomorrow. All right, see y'all at the In August 2009, Michigan State Athletic Director Mark Hollis outlined plans for a Celebrate the State football series featuring 12 games over 10 seasons against Central Michigan, Eastern Michigan, and Western Michigan. Uh, we compete on the field, and uh, we're not going to take that, uh, you know, make that secondary in anything. That's, that's why we're in the business, is to, to take our young student athletes and, and put them out into a field of competition. But the economic impact and the collaboration of these four institutions is enormous, especially in this situation. Um, coming off the 2009 NCAA Final Four down in Detroit, MSU continues to strive to lead and to provide a positive economic stories for the state of Michigan. I think all four of us up here, you know, as, as you look around intercollegiate athletics, you understand uh, the processes that we're going through when you, when you compel that with what's going on in the state of Michigan. Um, the, the economic pressures in our industry is very intense and that's one of the reasons why we came together uh, and, and started talking about a concept like this and, and where it could go. Part of your thoughts go back to the opportunities that Notre Dame gave Michigan State back in the day and, 
We've already received numerous letters from, from fans in Mount Pleasant thanking us, you know, no matter the outcome, uh, for providing an opportunity to have a game of this magnitude in, in Mount Pleasant. Part of it is the importance that the state of Michigan has uh, for those of us on campus. It was uh, an opportunity that was brought forward by Greg Iani, uh, discussed by Coach D'Antonio, myself, as well as many others. Um, one, to get the brand of Michigan State across the state, but as important is to have a positive impact on the, uh, the economy and, and the pocketbooks of, of Michigan State and those three programs that we will be competing against uh, both here in Spartan Stadium on three occasions and once on the road at their place. It's, it's not traveling on the road by a $40,000 charter flight. It's, it's a bus trip up. Um, it's a way to keep our money that we're spending as well as the fans attending the game, uh, keep their money in the state of Michigan, uh, and then create balance with, um, with an attractive home game at a, at a reasonable cost. And today, uh, that's getting more and more difficult to do as, as we're out balancing games against Notre Dame and Oregon and Alabama and Miami to have, um, you know, have some balance in the schedule, and this is a, very much a positive. Never know until you walk in there, and it's you know I've driven through Mount Pleasant many times, stopped by the stadium on several occasions, and um, it's going to be interesting to stand on that field and look up and, and get a sense of, of what it's like. I, I can't really envision uh, envision it, and um, you know I think it's going to be a positive experience for our team, for their team, as well as you know Spartans and Chippewas across the state that will assemble uh, both inside and outside <laughs> the stadium up there. We're talking coming up, you know, I spent 14 years in this conference and I know how excited the communities would be when if a Big Ten school uh, came to a Mac town and, uh, you know, you're kind of getting that flavor here. It's, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun for a lot of people. Good afternoon, everybody, from Mount Pleasant. It's the one you've been waiting for, the state of Michigan. It's the Spartans on the road against the Central Michigan Chippewas in Mount Pleasant. Side left, Palazzetti in front of Le'Veon Bell. Hand off to Le'Veon, dives to the goal line, trying to push that thing through that imaginary plane. He does! Touchdown, MSU! Radcliffe in the shotgun with the Spartans showing blitz, and here they come. He'll unload it right side, knocked down at the line of scrimmage by Marcus Rush. They're on second and 10 at his 36. Hands it to Garland, and Garland gets back to the 35. That's all stopped for a loss by William Golston. Takes the snap, looking to his right all the way. Fires, it's going to be picked off. Isaiah Lewis has it at midfield. Isaiah Lewis at the 30. Isaiah Lewis at the 20. Isaiah in a crowd, but won't go down until he reaches about the 17-yard line of CMU. From 39 yards out for Dan Conroy. Here is the snap, the put down, the kick is on the way, and it's wide to the right. So Dan Conroy has missed from 39, and the Spartan lead remains 7 0. Second down, a long four. Maxwell again with a straight eye behind him, winds up, throws right side. Benny Fowler with a catch. Out near the 30, second down six, Spartans at their 47. Leading here at CMU, seven and nothing in the first. Andrew Maxwell, play fake, steps back, guns it right side, caught by Mumphrey. Makes the first man miss, he's at the 30, now the 25 of CMU. 
Empty backfield for Andrew Maxwell. Throws over the middle. Tony Lippin makes the grab. He has a first down inside the 15. Spartan second and six at the CMU seven. They'll hand to Le'Veon to start the second. Runs to his left. Runs over Chippewas into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. And running back. Radcliffe under center, but he steps back to throw, and he's under pressure. He'll have to throw it away on the right side. And they're looking at fourth and 10 at the 27 of Michigan State. They'll not try the field goal. Radcliffe with Zerlon tipped into his left is in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Brian Radcliffe throws it. It is almost picked off. Curtis Drummond nearly picked it off. Spartans take over, two and a half to play in the half. First and 10 at their 27. Andrew Maxwell fires it out right side. Good grab made. Catch is made by Big Dion Sims. Just Le'Veon behind him. Two tight ends, two wideouts. Play fake to Le'Veon. He'll throw it left sideline. Grab is made by Keith Mumphrey in Central Michigan Territory. He's got a first down, MSU. Minute and a half to play in the half. Maxwell throws, winds up, fires right side. And Benny Fowler's got the pick skit. Andrew from the shotgun. Guns it right side. Tony Lippett with the catch. Tony Lippett to the 20. He's got a first down. Shotgun snap to Andrew Maxwell. Throws it right side. Deion Sims has it. Deion at the 10, at the 5. Into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. A 20-yard score. Andrew Maxwell to Deion Sims. 38 seconds to play in the half. Radcliffe was tipped into his left in the shotgun. Here is the snap and the pressure throws. It is picked off. Johnny Adams has it at midfield. 29-yard field goal try. High snap. And the Dan Conroy kick is good. As time runs out in the first half, then our halftime score will read Michigan State 24, Central Michigan nothing. Finish your pounding, guys. Nothing's easy. I keep saying that. Don't let them back in this game. Pound them. Finish them right in front of their feet. Right in front of their people. Okay? Be confident. Make the adjustments on the sideline. Play to win. Get out of here. Maxwell under center, play fakes to Le'Veon, now pump fakes, fires right sideline, got a man open, it is DeAnthony Arnett at the 20, DeAnthony at the 15, finally dragged down at the 12 yard line of CMU. Andrew winds up and throws right side, all by himself is Benny Fowler, touchdown MSU. End around handoff goes to Courtney Williams, he lost it, bobbled it, finally fell on it back at the 15. Radcliffe under center. Hit from behind as he rolls to his right. Guess who got him? William Golston got him again. Courtney Williams set left. Under center, Radcliffe play fakes, throws left side, incomplete. So the Spartans hold CMU on fourth and one, third down and one. Up the gut, it's Larry Caper on his feet at midfield. He's at the 40, Larry Caper at the 35 yard line, angles to the near right sideline, finally dragged down inside the 30 yard line of CMU Larry at the Caper. 29. The Spartans had Lawrence Thomas at 6'3 and 295 in an up back. Lawrence Wide out is Jeremy Langford set to the right. They'll throw it right side to Lawrence Thomas, and Lawrence Thomas has a first down inside the 20. It's a 26 yard try from the right hash mark. Here's the snap and the put down and the boot. It's up, it's good. Snap to Radcliffe. Delayed handoff to tipped and hit, fumbled. Scooped up by Ellsworth. Kyler Ellsworth nearly had himself a touchdown. Sprinting down the left sideline, but he's tripped up just inside the 30. Connor Cook throws for Burbridge, makes the catch, cuts inside from the 20. Connor Cook throws, caught at the 10. Fighting his way left side, Andre Sims Jr. He's inside the five. Again, the straight eye behind Connor Cook. Again, the handoff to Nick Hill. Off left guard into the end zone. Touchdown, MSU. And the first road game in this Celebrate the State Series is in the books. First big road win. First road win, guys. First road win. Okay, nothing's easy. Wasn't easy in the start of this whole thing either. But we just had a workmanlike attitude out there. Just kick. 
chop wood like they say, whatever. They say. We just kept working. <laughs> okay, we just kept working and got it done. But uh, congratulations. We get ready for Notre Dame, guys. Night time, night game. Let's see where we go. On one. One.